Hi, I'm Toby with Roanoke Public Libraries in Roanoke, Virginia, and I'm here to read a story for you today. It's called Oji-chan's Gift, written by Chiari Uegaki and illustrated by Genevieve Sim. Some of the words in our story are going to be in Japanese, so let's practice a little bit before we begin. Oh, the first word we have actually is Oji-chan, which is like grandpa. The next word we have is bento, which is like a small lunchbox. Afterwards, we have chan, which is a suffix you put at the end of a name to express familiarity or affection. Next, we have honto ni arigato, which is like uh, thank you very much or really thank you. Um, onigiri is the last one, and it's like a small rice ball. So, Oji-chan's gift by Chieri Uegaki and Genevieve Sims. When Mayumi Van Horten was born, her grandfather built her a garden. It sat behind a tidy brown house nearly halfway around the world, and it was unlike any other garden she knew. There were no tulips, or daffodils, or daisies, no carrots, or cabbages, or peas. Oji-chan had made the garden out of stones, big ones, little ones, and ones in between. Some reminded Mayumi of turtles. Others stood like mountains, rugged and tall. Around the border, Oji-chan had uh, planted pine and maple, boxwood and bamboo. And in just the right spot, by a stone lantern and a persimmon tree, was a sheltered bench where Oji-chan and Mayumi would share onigiri bento packed in a lacquered box. Every summer, Mayumi spent two months with Oji-chan, and with each year, her ability to care for the garden grew. She learned that moss on a rock was a gift of time, not to be washed away with a hose, that weeding was more pleasant in the morning, and that clipping shrubs to look like clouds was the best of all reasons to prune. Raking gravel, though, was what Mayumi enjoyed most. She loved how the tiny rocks chattered as they passed through the rake's wooden teeth. She loved the different patterns she could make, wavy, zigzag, and straight. But rings, like ripples in a pond, were her favorite. And when she was done, Mayumi and oji would sit and enjoy the results of her efforts in happy silence. Often when Mayumi was back home in her narrow house, listening to the clamor of traffic outside, she would wish for the sounds she heard at oji the rustle of leaves or the creak of a bough or a twittering bird. At those times, Mayumi would open up the tin that held souvenirs from her visits, leaves she'd pressed in the book until they dried, as delicate as dragonfly wings, tiny pine cones, still springy between her fingertips, a smooth black stone that when warmed in her hand, helped to remember. Then, one summer, everything changed. Mayumi noticed the differences as soon as she arrived. Things in the house that used to shine were dusty and dull. In the garden, shrubs and trees were overgrown, and dead leaves and needles littered the ground. Everything looked left alone. She understood now that what her parents had told her was true. oji could not live here anymore. Later, in oji room, Mayumi tried to smile while she showed him photos from the school year. Birdsong wafted in on green-scented breeze. Mayumi looked out at her garden. Hi, oji said. It's been waiting for you, Mayumi-chan. After lunch, while oji napped, Mayumi went into the garden and walked out onto the gravel. As she stared at the rock that towered over every other rock around it, the tight bud of feeling that she had been in her chest, or that had been in her chest all morning, suddenly burst open. And with a rush, she put her hands on the rock, braced her feet in the dirt beneath her, and gave a mighty shove. When nothing happened, Mayumi turned around and leaned back, knees bent. She pushed as hard as she could, wanting the rock to give, and if it did, she was going to push and push and push until the thing toppled over. 
but the rock didn't budge, not even a little. Mayumi kicked the ground hard, spraying gravel everywhere. She kicked again and again, not caring, until a rock ricocheted back and hit her on the face. She froze, and as she noticed the mess she'd made, she put a hand to her cheek and sagged to the ground. After a while, Mayumi stood up and began raking because it was something useful that she could do. And as she slowly raked the gravel back into place, stooping now and then to pick up a stray leaf or to pocket a shiny pebble, a tiny idea took root. The next morning, while her parents packed up the house, Mayumi knocked on Oji-chan's door. Ah, Mayumi-chan, he said. Is it lunch already? Mayumi walked to where he sat and held out the lacquered bento box. This feels heavier than onigiri, Oji-chan said as he took it from her. He grinned. What are you feeding me? Maybe mud pies? Mayumi smiled and shook her head. Oji-chan set the box on his lap, and after a moment, he lifted the lid. Now I've made you a garden, Mayumi said. Oji-chan took her hand and gripped it tight. Arigato, Mayumi-chan, he said. Honto ni arigato. Thank you very much. Back home, Mayumi unpacked her suitcase and set aside several small bags. Then she took out her tin and emptied all of her treasures. The sand gravel went in first, followed by stones of various sizes placed just so. She added a pine cone next and then a leaf before patting the gravel flat. Then using her pinky as a rake, Mayumi carefully made smooth, even rings around the three largest rocks. And though the garden was much smaller and the sound was much softer, if she closed her eyes and listened, she was certain she could still hear the pebbles soothing chatter. The end. Thank you for listening. This week we'll actually be having our own sand and, and pebbles so you can maybe make a miniatures and garden too. Wear a sandbox and go outside, maybe find some things to put in it. You know, feel free to use your creativity. But thank you very much. At the little free libraries, that's right, uh, around town. Thank you very much.